So welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today for the School of Environmental and Natural Resources Sciences Academic Information Session. My name is Brooke Lynch and I'll be I'm a student recruitment officer at, um, based out of our Frost campus in Lindsay and I will be your moderator for the session. Before we begin, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that Fleming College sits on the traditional lands of the Ashinaabe and Mississauga peoples. We offer our gratitude for our First Nations, for their care of our earth and our relations. I'm joined virtually today with the following panelists, our Dean, Tanya Clarick, Lisa Kramer, our professional and coordinator for the Common First Semester suite of programs, Josh Feltham, professor and program coordinator for and Brittany Ryan, our admissions officer. And I'll Tanya with some opening remarks, please. Welcome to our town hall. As Brooke just mentioned, I'm the Dean at Fleming College School of Environmental and Natural Resource Sciences. It is a pleasure to see that so many have joined us today, as this means that we must have sparked your interest at some point. Choosing your future career and starting post-secondary education can be at the best of times a stressful experience. And I can imagine that the uncertainty of the current situation increases the stress level for many of you. During today's town hall, we are going to address some of the most frequently asked questions, introduce two of our amazing faculty, and hopefully give you some reassurance about the upcoming fall semester. We are hoping that the session will provide you with some confidence in the choice you are going to make related to your education. And I'm going to give it now over to Brooke, who's going to moderate the session. Great, Tanya. Uh, so thank you everyone who has already submitted questions prior to this academic information session. I see that our numbers are growing here, so we we'll to folks that are just joining us now. Uh, after we have compiled your questions and we will offer a response during this session to those previously submitted questions. Um, after this portion, uh, we will move then to a Q&A and we will respond to your Q&A questions. You do find or you will find a panel on the side portion of your screen where you can submit your Q&A questions for the panelists to enter at the end of the first part of the session. Um, after the session is complete, all the questions and answers will be posted online and will be available for your reference as well. So if you feel like you've missed something, not to worry, you will be able to access those uh, questions and answers um, online as well. So I know the number one question, as we saw through the submissions, um, is, uh, is a big question. And the first question that we're going to start off right out of the gates is what will the course delivery look like this fall? And I would ask Tanya or Dean Tanya to respond to this question, please. Sure, so Fleming College's planning for the fall term is based on what we call our Fleming Safe Plan. So we will ensure that students can complete the learning outcomes required in their programs while maintaining the highest possible safety standards in compliance with all government and public health directives. So the Fleming safe plan for the fall term would allow for theoretical and practical learning outcomes of programs to be completed through a combination of online learning and practical face-to-face -face applied learning, either in labs, through fieldwork, or through compressed hands-on experiences. So that means that during the first seven weeks of the fall semester, courses will be delivered online with an emphasis on the theoretical components of the courses. After the reading break, programs will take a different approach to the last seven weeks of the fall term, and we have uniquely tailored these approaches. So we have analyzed each program thoroughly to ensure that the proposed plan allows students to complete all the learning outcomes and provide a rich learning experience while keeping students, staff and faculty safe. So lectures that will be delivered online throughout the fall term to avoid large gatherings on campus. Some programs will be delivered fully online during the fall term, while others take a hybrid approach with some components being delivered face-to-face. -face. This could be either during regular scheduled classes or as compressed hands-on experiences. And in some cases, we are readjusting the sequence of courses. 
for example, the third semester of the drilling and blasting program, which is heavily hands on, will move all theoretical components into the first seven weeks of the fall term and focus after the reading break on all hands on labs, which will be delivered in person. We will, of course, have protocols in place for all the practical work to ensure everybody is safe. And faculty that have worked diligently on establishing the best plans for their program and have done amazing work redeveloping their material to online or hybrid delivery. Our plan puts health and safety of everyone first and allows for our students to acquire the high quality education that they expect from Fleming College. During the next weeks, program coordinators, they will reach out to you with more details about program specific approaches. But for now, I'm going to give it over to Lisa Kramer. She is a program coordinator of the coming first semester. She wants to provide you with some additional information. Lisa, if you could unmute your mic. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so my name is Lisa Kramer. I'm the coordinator for Common First Semester. Um, so for many of you who are just starting out brand new into semester one, you might not know what Common First Semester means. So I just want to take a couple minutes to explain the basic idea. Um, so Common First Semester is a set of courses that um, all students take in a bunch of different programs. So if you're in environmental technician, fish and wildlife, conservation, um, biology, forestry tech, resource drilling and blasting, uh, who am I forgetting? Ecosystem management. So all of these programs take the same seven courses in the first semester. So I'm your point of contact for any questions that you might have regarding any absolutely anything. So if this town hall ends and you feel like you you think of something after the fact and you you want to find some answers, and you don't quite know who to contact. I am your point of contact for anything. And if I don't know the answer, I can certainly pass you on to the person who, who would be best to answer that question. So my name and my email is on the slide that you're looking at right now. So just um, jot it down if you're one of those students who is going into semester one and feel free to contact me anytime if you have any questions. Excellent. Thanks, Lisa. Another one of the big questions that we're hearing is I have concerns about online learning. How are you ensuring that the program quality is not being compromised? And I would like to ask Josh to respond to this question, please, Josh. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. As one of the faculty responsible for programs in the common first semester that uh, Lisa just explained to you, as well as in uh, upper semester courses, I'd like to share with you some of the information that, uh, that will help you to understand how we ensure quality of the programming. First of all, it's important to note that our courses and programs all have specific learning outcomes that we must achieve. So we have to adhere to those learning outcomes. We can't um, remove them or, or pay attention to some and, and not others. So that's important. And all faculty essentially go back to these learning outcomes when they're developing their courses. And they've been working diligently to make sure that the online resources, uh, courses and activities um, meet all of these learning outcomes. So that's really important as far as the quality of the programming and the content and, and skills and knowledge that you're going to acquire. For courses that have practical outdoor um, and lab activities, we've developed activities for you to engage in that can be completed where you live while maintaining safe physical distancing practices. Some courses will also have activities that will be completed on campus during practical learning and assessment boot camp events. Learning to be engaged and present in an online virtual environment is an increasingly relevant skill in light of our current situation. And so key elements of the quality of your experience will be your engagement in the online community of students and faculty. And we have activities and sessions at our school within each program and for each course that are designed to introduce you to your faculty and classmates. You'll not only acquire new knowledge and skill in your chosen field of study, You'll acquire new knowledge and skill in online learning, communication, and collaboration. Excellent. Thanks, Josh. Um, and the third question comes uh, with some great interest. I can see some questions pouring in through the, the chat. So 
the question that we are receiving is about uh, residence options as well as uh, students living three hours away from from our community and if instruction does shift from online to in class what are the housing options for this and then to dovetail to that uh, that specific question moving into residence uh, and residence options and if Tanya could take that question that would be great thanks Tanya Sure. So um, we are closely monitoring provincial and local public health guidelines surrounding decisions made on physical distancing. Therefore, a decision has not been made yet on how residents will operate this fall. We will be adhering to the guidelines provided to, to ensure the optimum health and safety of our students and of staff. And we are providing updates on our residence portal where you can learn of any new decisions surrounding residence, which will hopefully uh, come in the next uh, weeks as well. In the event students do not secure room in residence, we do have a number of off campus housing available as well for students to access. Tanya, if you could also even highlight uh, the idea of shifting from online to in class, that it won't be done. Uh, in a turnkey sort of process, there would be some notice there. Um, yes, so as I said, the first seven weeks are definitely going to be online. So if students require a place to stay, it would be first after the reading break. So for the last seven weeks of the term, as I mentioned uh, before, not all programs take this approach and coordinators are going to reach out in the next two weeks to uh, share program specific plans so students can plan accordingly for the fall term. Excellent. Thanks, Tanya. Another big question that we're receiving is uh, the option of a deferral. And I would like to ask you, Brittany, uh, to highlight uh, deferral options. Absolutely. The request to defer a program offer is not a tradition that's offered by Fleming College. We are prepared to welcome students this fall in an alternate delivery format, and we've dedicated time and planning to offer a seamless experience for our students while ensuring learning outcomes are not compromised. In the event a student is no longer interested in joining us in the fall, we would be happy to consider your application for the next intake. For domestic students, if you are interested in attending in winter 2021, if this is applicable for your program, you will simply need to add this choice to your OCAS application, and then we will get back to you shortly. Applications for fall 2021 will open in OCAS in October. If a student makes a decision to defer, your seat would not be guaranteed and applications will be considered along with all other new students applying. This could potentially result in an increase of waitlisted program options. For international students, if you are interested in deferring, please reach out to international admissions at flemingcollege.ca for information on this process. Thanks, Brittany. Uh, big topic is our tuition payment and deadline. I'd like to keep the floor with you, Brittany, to offer a response for, for that, please. When looking at fall 2020, tuition fees will not be reduced as the learning outcomes and curriculum expectations will remain the same. The delivery schedule will be adjusted to accommodate physical distancing protocols due to COVID-19. For courses that rely on field trips, practicum and applied projects, schedules have been adjusted and these course requirements will be delivered later in the semester. Additional adjustments have been made to the course delivery schedule for some programs and this allows for smaller group sizes where labs and field work are required early in the fall semester. For domestic students beginning in the fall, the non-refundable and non-transferable $250 deposit is due on June 15th. Usually our deposit is $500. However, for this year, it has been lowered. The balance of the tuition is due August 7th. For international students, please follow the fee deadlines outlined on your offer letter. I also just briefly wanted to mention some information about OSAP. So the OSAP application for fall 2020 is now available. This year, the government is providing additional funding and grants, so it is a great idea to apply. The Fleming College bursary application doesn't open until the first day of classes. And if you have any questions about OSAP, grants, bursaries, or any sort of funding, please contact finaid at flemingcollege.ca. That's F-I-N-A-I-D at FlemingCollege.ca, and they can assist you with any questions you might have. 
Excellent. Thanks, Brittany. And just as a reminder for folks that maybe didn't join for the first few minutes, this will be posted on our website. So you'll be able to access um, that email address after the session is over um, easily. Um, the next question that has come through is uh, highlighting uh, the sports and recreation opportunities in the fall and what uh, will be available. If I could ask you, Brittany, to offer response to that um, as well, please. Yeah, so right now we are reviewing our options for fall sports and recreation activities alongside return to campus and return to sport plans. So there will be no athletic facility fee for the fall, but we are working with our city partners for students to have access to the Lindsay Recreation Complex on a month to month basis at a student rate. Another big question that students are always looking for is when their timetable will be available. Brittany, can you offer some guidance on this as well, please? Yeah, definitely. So your timetable will be built for you and it will be available on the first page of your student center in August. Before receiving your timetable, two things need to be done. So number one, if you have any conditions on your offer, you need to ensure that these have been met and they're cleared. Number two, the balance of your tuition for that semester needs to be paid or have OSAP confirmed to pay that balance. If you're unsure what your conditions are, or if you're unsure if you received a conditional offer, please email admissions at flemingcollege.ca and we can definitely look into this for you. An example of a conditional offer would be an applicant currently enrolled in high school. The minimum the minimum admission requirement for the Fleming program they have accepted may be, for example, um, Ontario Secondary School Diploma, including grade 12 college level English at least. In order to have met that condition, we would require a transcript showing that these requirements have been completed. For domestic students, a few days after accepting an offer at Fleming College, your fall 2020 fee notification will be available on the first page of your student center. And this is just under the tab, your fee notification. This provides you with a full breakdown of your tuition and ancillary fees for that semester. For new international students, you will not have a fee notification. Your fee information is included on your offer letter. Excellent, thanks, Brittany. Um, I am seeing some questions come through the chat on this too. So a great time for the next option or the next uh, topic, sorry. Um, are there resources to help students learn in an online environment? I would like to ask you, Lisa, to respond to this question, please. Thanks, Brooke. Yeah, this is a this is a, a, a big and good question. Um, so the college has been working really hard to streamline some of the information that they have that will help students be supported in this online environment. So obviously for all of us, this is, is a completely different world that we're entering into. So the college has put together um, a, a, wet, a one stop one stop shop um, where you can find all kinds of information on how to succeed in an online world. And that link will be supplied on the website, as Brooke mentioned at the beginning of this session. So on this site, you're going to find information about how to um, how to manage your time well, which is a, is a really, really, really critical piece when it comes to working online. Time management is 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 critical if you're for success. Um, other things that you're going to find on this link are how to navigate D2L. So for those of you who are new to D2L and have never seen it before, it's our learning management system. Basically what that means, it's the, it's the house in which all your class information is going to sit. So there are video links, so you don't even have to, you know, read all this boring information. You can just go to the video um, through this link and it can kind of walk you through how to find your, uh, how to access your course pages, how to access your grades and, and all that kind of information. Similarly, there's another video link on WebEx. So just as we're sitting here right now on WebEx, um, some of your courses may offer some of the material through this very similar format. For some of you, you've never used WebEx before. So there's information there that can help you um, basically um, support you through any kind of questions that you might have. And the last piece that I, I feel is worth mentioning this is gonna come up probably a little bit later as well is access to tutoring services. So um, through this link, you can find information on how to access tutoring services, services at the college. Um, so all of this information sitting in one place, the college is, is trying to make all of this information 
as easily as accessible to you as they can. Excellent. Thanks, Lisa. Um, I'm sorry. Did you highlight the counseling and wellness question, Lisa? No, not yet. Do you want me to? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I'll, I'll I, take the I'll take the next two together, actually. So great. So the questions are about um, uh, counseling, wellness, and mental health supports, as well as AES. Um, sorry, accommodations, which I see um, coming up in some of the chat questions as well. So the college does still offer counseling services um, and those counseling services cover a variety of things. It might be personal wellness. So things related to mental health. Um, and that becomes increasingly important for students as the semester for many as the semester progresses and stress and, and anxiety and test anxiety start to become a bigger thing. Um, the college is operating these services the same they in the same way they would if we were in the building the only difference is of course it's going to be via slightly different formats so you can call counseling services and that information contact information is going to be available for you on the website it, you can call them you can webex with counselors just like we're doing now or of course there's email um, when it comes to the um, accessible education supports, and so this is a big question for students who are coming in from high school. This is often a big question. That, you know, we hear, I have an IEP in high school. How does that transition to the college world? Um, and so the answer to that is there, there is um, an accessibility counseling service that, that exists. Um, and so what you would do if this IEP situation applied to you, is make an appointment to see one of these counselors and you can start doing that right now. They're already starting to take student appointments. Um, you would meet with a counselor again via WebEx um, or via phone, um, whichever you're more comfortable with. And those accommodations can be set in place so that you're ready for the, the semester to start in September. So accommodations, um, and again, it's a wide variety of accommodations that are possible. Um, so if you have any hesitation or any questions about that, I encourage you to reach out to counseling services, even if you're uncertain as to whether or not you could get accommodations, it's worthwhile to reach out and find that information. And again, if you have any other questions about it, um, feel free to contact me and I can certainly help direct you to the right people. Excellent. Thanks, Lisa. Um, another great resource that we offer is uh, First at Fleming, which is a summer transition program. Lisa, could you provide a little more insight on this uh, transition program as well, please? Yeah, you bet. So this is a program that um, I actually took part in last summer for the first time. It's a one day event that is um, scheduled to take place on September 1st. And so this is a one day event um, for students who have accommodations who might be a little bit uncertain as to what to expect. And so this one day event, um, again, this year, it's going to be offered virtually. And it's a, it's a series of information sessions on what to expect. But at the very end of the, the panel, um, and for many students, we hear feedback that this panel is probably, for many students, one of the more valuable things. The panel consists of, um, some faculty, so I know Josh and myself were on it last year, as well as students. And so you as an incoming student would have the uh, option or the ability to ask questions to not only students, but also to faculty to kind of kind of get a sense of what to expect um, for the fall. So again, we're offering these services virtually. It will probably look similar to what we're looking at right now. So it would be a, a WebEx type um, type forum. Um, but all these services are still going ahead. Excellent. Thanks, Lisa. The other question we were asking, uh, being asked about was access to student health services. Will that still be available? Lisa, can you answer that one um, as well? Yeah, you bet. Um, so yeah, health services, um, they're currently staffed or they're available for student consultations. Um, so. Again, there's a phone number that you can access them by. Um, they can connect you to um, nurses and doctors as appropriate, depending on the situation. So those services are still running in more. Perfect. Um, 
you highlighted a number of resources too, and I can see some inquiries coming through the chat about tutoring. Um, that's a big support piece for our students. Uh, what about tutoring as well, Lisa? Yeah, so tutoring, um, actually, when I started out at the college, um, I worked as a tutor as well. So it's a, it's, a, it's a system that I'm really familiar with. Tutoring services are, as a student at the college, you get three hours of free tutoring one-on-one -on -one, um, per week. And we offer tutoring in all kinds of different programs. And I can tell you right now, for anybody entering into semester one of any of those diploma programs I mentioned earlier, the biggest one for tutoring is the math course. And so I highly, highly, highly recommend that students seek out these services if they think they're struggling in courses such as math, it, but it could be anything. There's, there's, there's tutoring in all kinds of courses. Um, so it's three hours free per week, um, but they also offer as many drop-in sessions as you want to drop into. Again, the way that's going to look is um, a virtual kind of WebEx format. Now, um, for some courses like math, you might think this is a very difficult format to tutor in, but there is capacity within WebEx to actually have a whiteboard so you can write I could write on the whiteboard and I can write out equations and you can see it on your end. So there are ways to kind of work around this idea that we're going to be tutoring at distance. Um, but the tutoring services, um, and again, that link I talked about earlier where all those resources were pulled together, the tutoring information sits there as well in terms of how you know how to register. And again, if you if you if you lose that link or you can't find it and you want to investigate tutoring, um, you can contact me and I can certainly send you to the people that can help you directly with that. Excellent. Thanks, Lisa. Um, we have a number of Indigenous student learners on campus as well. So what supports are in place for our Indigenous student services who identify as a First Nations status or non status Métis or Inuit? And Lisa, I'm hoping you can field this, this question as well, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, similar story to some of the other services I discussed. Um, the Indigenous uh, Student Office still exists. Um, it exists in a virtual sense, but again, also uh, phone, um, phone calls are, are available as well. Um, and the Indigenous Student Services Department, it basically covers anything related to and anything any Indigenous issues that you might have. There's access to elders, there's access to traditional knowledge holders. Um, if you're an Indigenous student and you're having difficulty finding housing, um, all of these questions that you might have as an Indigenous student, this is where you're going to go to, and they will help you and support you and, and kind of guide you through the process. So again, that information and the contact information for that, for who to talk to, is going to be posted on the link that um, Brooke is going to post at the end of this town hall. Yeah, great. Thanks, Lisa. Um, one of the, another major question that we're seeing is how will I know what I need to do before classes start in the fall? So I would like to ask Dean Tanya to respond. Um, how are we going to set our students up for success? Sure. So. Student Experience will be holding an online orientation event for students attending in the fall, and we will be in touch regarding the details later this summer. We are also planning to host one online welcome day in the week of July 13th. The exact date will be confirmed and communicated, and more details will follow as well. So please watch for announcements on the college website. Also, as I mentioned at the start of the session, program coordinators are planning to provide program specific details in the next weeks through Ask Me Anything sessions, similar to what we have today, phone calls or emails. So again, please monitor your emails and the Fleming College website for more information. Excellent, thanks Tanya. Yes, we are seeing a number of program specific questions come through the Q&A. Um, and I'd like to move over to this where we can uh, do our best to answer these questions flowing in. But just to reiterate, a lot of these are very personal questions to your specific programs, and you will receive clear communication from your coordinator to outline these requirements. Uh, one question I'm seeing in here is about textbooks and will students require textbooks? Also, how do I um, obtain my textbooks? You are able to visit uh, the campus bookstore online. 
where you can um, purchase your books and have them shipped to you. They will have a course outlined there as well. So any textbooks that are required, you can purchase them ahead of time using the online option there. The other question that we're seeing a lot through the Q and A is um, the residence piece. Um, Tanya, if I could just ask for you to reiterate the residence question response, just because I'm thinking folks didn't join, um, as the decisions are have not been made yet about residence, but there is a great platform there that where we will share all of the updates on uh, residents moving forward. So, yeah, because we have not received the provincial and local public health guidelines, we haven't come to a final decision yet how residents will operate this fall. So, this impacts the potential capacity of residents, but we have to adhere to the guidelines that are provided to ensure optimum health and safety, which means that we most likely are going to operate residents at reduced capacity this fall. Again, we are providing updates on the residence portal where you can learn of any new decisions surrounding residence. And if you're not able to secure a room in residence, we have as well a number of off-campus housing options available for students to access. But please keep in mind as well that the pressure on residence is not as high this fall as we have quite a few programs that are running online this fall. Excellent, thanks Tanya. Just trying to group these questions together um, as well. Um, I did see a question come through about timing for classes. So with the alternate delivery, what sort of expectations are you looking for for classes and the timing that it will be delivered? For example, when do classes, when could you expect classes to start and how late could classes run until? Tanya, would you be able to provide some insight on that, please? Sure, the timing of classes won't be any different this fall from you uh, scheduling. So all students will receive a regular timetable based on our usual standards. So classes could start at uh, 8 a.m. in the mornings and run until 8, 8 p.m. in the evenings. And maybe some exceptions as well, say heavy equipment operator where classes may start a bit earlier, like 7.30 in the morning, but that is based on the regular schedule similar to last year's. Excellent. Um, seeing as the heavy equipment operator is, is uh, delivered in a non-traditional sort of format, being the 12-week section, could you offer a little bit of insight on that 12-week structure, Tanya, for heavy equipment operator, please? Yeah, so the heavy equipment operator is planned to start as usual with the start date. The first uh, two weeks, we are focusing on, again, the theoretical component in the program. Um, after that, we're moving to regular delivery. So Mondays are going to be dedicated to uh, lectures and some uh, labs, and that is going to be remotely delivered like online. And then the remaining four days of the week are going to be uh, the hands-on work on the machines in the field uh, at Frost Campus. So students are going to be in smaller groups this year. Each student is going to have their individual machine to work on for four and a half hours in a row, as usual. Um, same operating time on the machines, so uh, no real changes to the heavy equipment operator program. Excellent, thanks, Tanya. For international students, I wonder, Brittany, if you could offer uh, an overview for deferral again, just for folks that joined us halfway through. Yeah, so for the international students, it is a different process. So what we recommend is to email international admissions at flemingcollege.ca and they can just assist you through that process. Excellent. Thanks, Brittany. Um, there just there's one question here, Tanya, looking for clarification on whether students are welcome to live at home for the first seven weeks of programming. 
Yeah, sure. They can live uh, at home. Uh, nothing prevents them. As long as they have internet access and can access the courses, they're welcome to uh, live at home. So for the panelists, do you see anything in the chat that I missed that should be addressed? And just a reminder to our this the uh, folks joining will be posted on our website where you registered for the session. So you will be able to see and access this information along with our contact information and then our, our ask us email if you feel like your questions weren't answered during this session. Um, but just back to the panelists, is there anything that you see there that you feel I've missed? I see some questions kind of um, about timing and how it's going to look in the second seven weeks, but I, I don't, without, we don't know what programs they're in. And so it's going to look different um, depending on what program you're in. So I would suggest that if you want further clarification on um, what your second seven weeks is going to look like, um, you could contact me and I can send you to the right coordinator if you're uncertain as to who that is. but. The, the information is um, very specific to your program, so we can't kind of comment on a, on, a, on a global sense as to how that's going to look. Thanks, Lisa. And as it's been commented, we will have uh, program information set up with your program coordinator. So you will be able to ask these very specific program directed questions um, through a similar format or or through uh, email to the program coordinator as well. Um, Brooke, I saw a few questions around the starter. I assume it's like backpacks for first semester. Maybe Lisa, do you want to just touch on that? Sure, yeah, I was looking at those as well. So um, if you're in common first semester, there is a kit that you will be receiving. So that, that information is coming and we're just putting together those pieces. There were other questions about other um, pieces that you might need for your courses. And again, I don't know what programs you're specifically in, but your coordinator will be providing that information and I encourage you all to um, go to your program specific. If you're not in semester one, go to the program specific um, uh, town halls, even if you are in semester one, try to try to find, and again, contact myself and I can send you to the right coordinator if you're uncertain as to who that is. Um, I, there is a question here that I wanted to touch on that I think is actually a, a really good question. Um, and the question is, you know, if we have problems with the technology and we can't attend class, um, what, what do we do? So the problems with technology question. I think this is a great question. Um, so there will be in some way, um, and again, this is this is kind of course specific, but I can speak to what I have done and I, whatever I do live, I also post in a recorded way. And so um, it's going to come down to your individual faculty and how they've arranged their course. Um, but there is an awareness amongst faculty that um, students might not have access to good internet or there might be other things going on in their home that prevent them from actually being at, in, an, in an, a, a session such as this. So. Um, that has been kind of worked into a lot of the development that we've been doing and, and faculty collectively have been working really hard at trying to make this experience um, the best and most flexible for students as possible. Excellent. Thanks, Lisa. There's also a question here about um, common first semester. I wonder if you could provide just sort of the high level overview of the, the, the design of common first and the opportunity to switch within another program. Uh, before week nine, as long as seats are available. Sure, yeah, um, that's a really good question. And I, I think I went over my list of programs at the beginning so quickly that I'm not sure that I left. I might have left some out. So I'm going to go through my list. I have it written in front of me so I don't forget anybody. So if you are in environmental technician, ecosystem management, conservation biology, forestry technician, um, oh, I have I have conservation biology done twice. Forestry, tech, um, resource drilling and blasting, or fish and wildlife. Those are all your common first semester um, people. And so the beauty of common first semester, uh, first of all, common first semester is intended to showcase the breadth of um, information and curriculum that supports all of those programs. 
So you're going to get, um, you know, if you're a fish student, you're going to get all the biology parts. You're going to get, um, you know, identification skill development. The, the roots of that are going to, the foundations of that are going to start in semester one. If you're on the um, geology side, if you're an earth resource, or oh, earth resource technician, that's the one I forgot, earth resource technician, or if you're a drilling student, there's going to be courses in common first semester that supports um, those types of interests. So focus on geology and soils and, and that type of stuff. So the beauty of um, common first semester is it allows students because you're all taking the same courses. If you arrive and you decide, you know what, fish and wildlife's not for me. I actually talked to a friend of mine and drilling's looking like a good option to me now. You can within the semester uh, and right up to the very end, you can apply internally to change programs. And because you're all taking the same courses, you don't lose any ground. So you can kind of seamlessly go between programs within that first semester. And so um, the other thing I want to mention for uh, students who are in first semester in these programs that I just mentioned, about halfway through the semester, I'm planning to have a meet the coordinator session, um, which we've been running for the, the past year. We've tried it a couple of times and that will allow, and again, it's probably going to look like this, but it allow you to, you know, talk to different coordinators, ask questions if you're deciding between different programs and you kind of want further clarification. So, so that's what common first semester is all about. It allows you to one, see the breadth of um, curriculum. So maybe you didn't know you were a geol maybe you didn't know you loved geology until you came and then you took the geology course, earth and atmosphere and you decided this is really for me. Or maybe you find out, hey, there's a whole bunch of jobs in this field and actually I kind of like it. So you can switch between programs. And so that's the that's the basic um, intent and, and, and advantage to common first semester. Excellent. Thanks very much, Lisa. No problem. If folks feel that uh, your questions were not answered um, or if you even think of a question after um, the session is closed, you can email us at the ask us at FlemingCollege.ca account and we'll respond. Or if you have a particular question to one of the panelists, including myself, um, please, you can see our email on the site there. You can email us directly and we'll be able to get those questions answered for you because we do want to ensure that you are comfortable uh, moving forward with your with your education. Um, also for the international students on this in joining this session as well, the best place to reach out is our international team at international at FlemingCollege.ca. And as we highlighted at the beginning of the session, all of this information will be available online so you can easily access these uh, these email addresses. So we just like to thank panelists for taking the time today to join our session, answering the questions of our prospective students. It's a, a crazy time, but yet an exciting time um, for everybody. Uh, I would like to also thank everyone who joined us today during this session. I hope that you did find it informative and helpful. And I also hope that it did alleviate some stress and maybe instilled some confidence um, in you to move forward and join us at our Frost Campus in the fall. Oh. Mentioned it, the session was recorded. It will be posted on the landing page where you registered for the session, so it'll be easily found. Um, and then please take a look, watch your email for updated information about our welcome days, program coordinator sessions, uh, and all of those program specific information sessions that we'll be running. So stay safe, everyone. Wishing you all the best as you hope you will prepare to join us in the fall. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.